Right, fantastic. All right, everyone. Um, well, um, again, Rachel, as Rachel mentioned, we will be considering endorsement of the amendment um, to the King County Charter later on in the agenda. Hopefully everyone will stick around for that. Um, in the meantime, I'm sorry, let me get my, there we go. All right, in the meantime, I'd like to welcome everyone to the August meeting of the 34th District Democrats. That's where you are. I'm uh, now calling the meeting to order for those of you just joining us. Um, I want to always call out that we did a uh, did have a mini program about the Charter Amendment 29, known as uh, Compassion Seattle, in uh, this month's uh, program. And thanks to Rachel and Tim and Ty for um, bringing that to us. Um, this is a November ballot initiative. So we wanted to give our members information so that they could determine where to throw their support. Um, we had a representative uh, from both sides, um, both the How's Our Neighbors um, uh, campaign, as well as the, the Compassion Seattle campaign. And we'll have that recording available on our YouTube channel later this week. And I'll also put it up on our Facebook page as well. Uh, we've got a lot of, on our agenda tonight. It will be another exciting uh, meeting for us. So uh, buckle in. Um, let's go ahead, Rachel, and uh, do our land acknowledgement. Great. Thank you, Carla. On behalf of the 34th LD Democrats, I acknowledge the land on which we stand today as the traditional home of the Coast Salish and Duwamish people, the traditional home of the Coast Salish and sorry, the traditional home of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, Snoqualmie and Muckleshoot nations. Without them, we would not have access to this gathering and to this dialogue. I ask that we take this opportunity to thank the original caretakers of this land on which we live and work who are still here. Okay, thank you, Rachel. All right, let's uh, recognize uh, some of our electeds, um, give them a moment to say hello. Uh, let's start, I believe I saw a uh, Burien City Council member, uh, Crystal Marks, also running for re-election. Uh, Crystal, do you wanna say a few words? Sure, I'd be honored to. Thank you, can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you, all right. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, hi, 34th Dems. It's great to be with you. My name is Crystal Marks. I'm the Deputy Mayor of Burien. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. I'm excited to be with you tonight. We are, uh, from a Burian standpoint, we've got a lot going on. Our next meeting is going to be on August 16th and we're talking about our housing action plan. It's very important. Um, if you would like to attend, we are still meeting on Zoom and you can go to burianwa.gov to find out the times um, at seven o'clock. But for the Zoom link, our housing action plan is crucial. It talks about how we're going to be providing housing uh, that is affordable for our region where it'll be, uh, who will build it, what our zoning plans might look like around it. So again, it's very um, important if you live in Burien, <clears throat> excuse me, that you show up and participate. Um, and then in terms of the candidate side of things, uh, so very grateful for your endorsement of um, my campaign. And for those of us that all four uh, Democrats who made it through the race, uh, thanks to your support and helping us door knock, coming to Burien Press with Nick and making sure to show up and pick up packets and knock those doors. Uh, really excited to move forward into the general. We got an amazing plan to knock at least at least 5,000 doors. <laughs> Sounds like a lot when it's hot outside, but um, look forward to folks joining us on the doors if you're able to do so, and really glad to be with you here tonight. Great, thank you. Um, I think I also see um, uh, King County uh, Executive Dow Constantine. Dow, would you like to say a few words? Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thanks again, I and mean, this is mostly official report, but thank you for the endorsement of the 34th District Democrats um, and the uh, strong vote of support from the voters of the 34th District last Tuesday. Um, I wanted to just report, uh, following up on the earlier program uh, about the work we're doing in health through housing uh, and more broadly in homelessness. Uh, we've completed the purchase now of 850 units of hotels and other move-in ready sites across the county on our way to 1600. This is my health through housing initiative. Uh, ultimately, folks will be moved from chronic homelessness into those homes with the services to keep them housed uh, and then be able to 
uh, take the, the time to uh, get recentered, begin to take advantage of the other services we can provide and move forward with their lives. Uh, we also have 1,300 vouchers between the county and the uh, housing authority uh, for folks to get homes on the market. Um, 500 uh, 24-hour a day enhanced shelter units coming online with services, uh, security, and sanitation. And then 400 jobs for folks who've been both homeless and unemployed, uh, working uh, for various county departments, helping with uh, basic tasks to help put our community back together, including uh, restoring wilderness, uh, cleaning up parks, uh, working on the roads and painting out graffiti and so forth. Uh, in the City Hall Park, which has been in the news this last week, we've been working since May on that challenge. Uh, I put money in the um, COVID-7, our seventh COVID supplemental budget that was passed by the County Council in May. In June, we went out uh, with a request for proposals for an organization to help us engage the people who are camped in City Hall Park and help get them into housing or shelter. Uh, in, um, and we did that in June. In July, we awarded a contract to the Defender Association, uh, headed by Lisa Dugard, uh, for their Just Care program, which is a coalition of nonprofit organizations. And since then, they've been reaching out to the people who um, are living in the park and over the course of the last week, 61 of those folks have been able to be relocated uh, to housing or 24-hour um, shelter. There are about 15 left in the park. Uh, the rest of those will be rehoused here in the next day or so. Uh, and then the restoration of the park by the city of Seattle is going to begin. Uh, that is a important, uh, but still, you know, relatively small part of the total challenge, but it is I think illustrative of what we're going to be able to accomplish with help through housing. Uh, we're going to be able to offer people, engage people and offer them the housing that they need with the services that will help them stay housed and not just stay housed, but actually reclaim some agency over their lives. And it's an exciting um, uh, opportunity to really turn the tide on homelessness in our, not just in the city of Seattle, but in our entire county, a uh, very exciting moment. So. I want to thank everyone for uh, your support of those efforts. It is uh, not something that can be accomplished overnight, uh, nor can it be accomplished without ruffling some feathers. And in some of the places where we have required hotels, people are, uh, you know, on next door and uh, so forth, uh, saying all sorts of uh, outlandish things. But what we are providing is housing, simply housing with the services to help people who may need it. Uh, but uh, it, is, it is an opportunity, I think, really for us to live out our values. And I so appreciate the support of uh, the 34th District Democrats and the Democratic Party in making that happen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, King County Conservation District Supervisor Chris Porter, would you like to say a few words? Counting down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Um, what I'd like to say is there are a lot of exciting things and changes going on at the Conservation District. Uh, we have a new chair. I am the new vice chair. We have a new um, permanent executive director. We've had a shift in leadership. So we're gonna see some new direction and uh, a variety of exciting things. I'd love to come back and talk to the 34th as I did the 37th about what's going on at the 37th, excuse me, at the Conservation District and the wonderful things we're doing. So we're at that period of time in our uh, growing and gardening cycle where you are thinking about what to do for winter. If you can leave the leaves on the ground, you'll hear me say this repeatedly, helps enrich the soil, brings the uh, worms and insects, which brings the birds. All of these um, creatures and birds are on the declines. So we need to do any and everything we can. And remember, native plants are our friends. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you, Chris, and congratulations. Thank you. Um, King County Council Member Joe McDermott, I see you out there. What do you got? Yeah, I'm Carla. Good, good evening. Um, your county council is actually on recess last week in this, so I'm sitting home on my deck um, listening to Chris's report, thinking about um, leaving all the leaves and not cleaning up the yard at all. Um, so I appreciate that very much, Chris. Um, the um, point I will highlight, um, I came in what, while um, Executive Constantine was speaking, he hit many of the points I might have tried to update you on. Um, 
whether he did or not, I will mention that last week, the Sound Transit Board had a, held a special meeting to address um, what we called realignment, which I want to be clear is to address the, um, rev the gap between expenses and projected revenue in um, our work. And the ultimate decisions by the board continue to hold us um, accountable for delivering projects as promptly as we promised the voters in the first place and um, does not um, delay West Seattle to Ballard um, at all. So I wanna um, highlight that and um, thank you all and turn it back over to you. Thank you. Um, City Council Member Herbold, welcome. Do we lose Lisa? People keep people are coming in and out and in and out. So sorry about that. Let me keep moving. Uh, Representative Cody, would you like to say anything tonight? I will just uh, make a quick health care comment. Our hospitals are filling up. Uh, they're very worried. Uh, we're almost at the point where we were, uh, you know, what a year and a half ago. Uh, and they're worried that they may have to move to crisis standards of care because of the increased COVID and also the heat. So I'm just gonna, want to put the plug in. Everybody make sure that you had your vaccine. If you know somebody that hasn't, please try and get them to get it. And also drink plenty of fluids so you don't end up in the ER this weekend. Awesome point. Thank you, Eileen. <laughs> awesome points. All right. Um, okay, great. I think I got everybody. It is a little hard to find everyone who's here. I wish I could just see your faces. That was so much easier. Gonzalez is here, Carla. Sorry? Council Member Gonzalez? Oh, uh, well, sorry. Um, yes, uh, for those who are going to be involved in the endorsements later, um, I was just going to hold off and uh, as they'll be speaking later in the evening. Thank you. All right, let's just head on into our survey question of the month. Um, Herbold is available too, Madam Chair. Oh, uh, well, I called her out earlier. Uh, uh, Herbold, are you uh, are you with us now? I am. Oh, Sorry, good. I was uh, wow. having a little bit of problem getting simultaneously off of video and mute at the same time. <laughs> no worries. Everybody, thanks for um, a couple of moments of your time. Want to uh, thank our West Seattle representatives on the Sound Transit Board for um, the recent outcome of the decision um, around the West Seattle alignment. I think it's a really, really good outcome and thank Council Member McDermott and uh, Executive um, Constantine for, for their work on that. Also just want to um, highlight that um, we're doing um, some really, I think, important work around community safety investments in uh, Council Member Mosqueda's budget committee and in my public safety committee. Really excited uh, to announce that the Human Services Department has finally funded um, upwards of $10 million of alternative uh, funding for community-based public safety investments that the council recommended last August. Uh, and really excited as well that um, some of the, the work around analysis of SPD call data, 911 call data is leading to the development of additional alternatives, working with the Seattle Fire Department and the new Community Safety Communications Center to create a new, what's called a triage one system to uh, take um, a number of those calls that um, armed sworn police officers don't do not need to, to accept. So we're continuing our work through um, the second quarter supplemental process and through my committee to uh, stand up those alternatives. Thank you, um, uh, Representative Cody for uh, referencing the needs this, this week around um, cooling centers around this, this extreme heat event that we're experiencing, a second one. Uh, and uh, I, I just echo the, the remarks around um, lifting up the presence and existence of cooling centers throughout, throughout 
District 1, at our libraries, at our community centers, and through our partnership with um, the Salvation Army on 16th Avenue Southwest. Um, they're going to be working with us as well um, over the next few days to, um, to make some space available for folks who, who need a place to go in these extreme heat um, moments. So thank you. Thank you. All right, anyone else? I don't want to miss anybody. Okay. All right, let's move forward uh, with the Speak Up survey question. This month is the last in the surveys about meeting venues. Uh, I know it seems probably obnoxious by this point how much input we're asking, but we want everybody to be happy. I want to thank uh, Sarah Smith for spending a lot of time researching all the options here in the district. Um, Les Trail once told me that I'd be surprised at how few options we have, and he's totally right. Um, however, it is important to me that we host our meetings across the district, um, not just in one piece of the district. So Burien, White Center, Del Ridge, even Vashon. Um, so please take a moment, click the link, um, hopefully it's in the chat for you, and uh, let me know how you feel about the choices that we have available to us. And we will be making some um, uh, uh, more solid plans as we get into the fall. Of course, we're seeing some bad things uh, with regards to COVID. Um, and that will definitely be taken into consideration before we start uh, booking meeting venues. Um, so again, uh, just let us know, um, will, you, will you attend in person at these places or will you uh, continue to Zoom? As always, thanks for speaking up, and now I'll cover our Zoom tips. All right, closed captioning, we've got that straight. Please uh, take a look in the bottom bar if you need closed captioning, it's available for you. We do pay for this every month, so um, feel free to use it if you need. Next, mute yourself. Please, let's keep order. Um, we've got um, some, some big stuff going on tonight. So I want to be sure that we are respectful of one another and uh, keep yourself on mute uh, so that we can have a nice clean meeting. Uh, raise your hand. Uh, we are going to ask you to raise your hand for a couple of our uh, things this evening. So uh, be familiar with where that is in your device. Um, it could be in a couple places. So it's either going to be in the participant window or it may actually um, be uh, in, in another area, depending on the type of device that you have. So hopefully by now, you know how to raise your hand and uh, use that as you need to. Um, chat, um, I, I, um, I just wanna make sure that um, we use the chat respectfully. Um, it should not be used to um, you know, call out um, uh, comments and your opinions. We have debate for that. Um, that is part of our um, process. So um, do use it though to send private notes to the hosts if you if you have problems or questions. Tonight we have Don Rains on as well as we've had the last couple months uh, to do any voting help for you. So you can use the um, co-host. Um, sorry, uh, you can use the um, the chat to communicate with Don if you have issues with your voting. Um, and just be aware that if you try to chat with me, I'm probably not going to see it because I'm looking at three different screens. So uh, bear with me there. Um, all right, tonight, uh, the agenda approval might not go so quickly. Quickly, I realize that some of you might want to consider additional endorsements this evening. We have three in our um, agenda, as you can see on the screen. Um, Given that two of our endorsed candidates did not make it to the general, um, I understand that uh, we, uh, those of you might want to uh, consider those this evening. In order to, for us to do that, however, we must proceed in a very specific way. A member must move to add those specific endorsements to the agenda. This motion must be seconded, and then we'll debate it. And it's not about the candidates at that point. Keep your debate to why we should do the additional endorsements this evening rather than in September. Um, just make sure that you uh, limit your debate in that way. Additional endorsements um, may, may be considered with the support of 80%, it's a higher threshold, but 80% of members 
present in voting tonight. So that's how we will do this, okay? All right, so you see the, uh, the um, agenda? Madam Chair. Thank you, yes. Um, I had my hand up and I wanted to say this before we got into endorsements. Okay. Chris. It was a comment. Yes, thank you. Um, it, it was a comment about the survey. I really, really want our members to uh, take into consideration the challenge and the hard work that our um, peers that live on Vashon Island go through and have been going through ever since I joined the 34th and how considering a meeting over there would be, I think, a wonderful gesture uh, and the alleviation of the um, ferry shuttle that they have to navigate each time we have these meetings. And it's just one of those things that I think is makes us a stronger uh, LD when we take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Took the words right out of my brain. Um, all right, I see Jordan, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, I move that we amend the agenda to include reconsideration of endorsement for Seattle City Council position nine and Seattle City Attorney, considering that our endorsed candidates in these races are not moving on to the general election. Okay, is there a second? Sarah Koch, second. Thank you, Sarah. So that's Jordan Crowley and Sarah Koch. Um, great. Jordan, would you like to speak to your motion? Sure. Uh, so one of the foundational purposes of our organization is to support the election of Democrats to public office. In June, we endorsed two Democrats who failed to receive the support of the city of Seattle. And now in both of those cases, we're faced with a Democrat running against a non-Democrat in what are sure to be extremely close contentious races. If we're going to make an effort to promote Democrats, it's not just justifiable, but wholly necessary to reconsider endorsement in those two races. Should our members choose to endorse the lone Democrats for Seattle City Council and Seattle City Attorney, it's important that we bring that endorsement and offer our support as soon as possible so that our organization and our PCOs can work with those campaigns to take full advantage of the 12 weeks we have between now and the general election. We procrastinate if we pursue the alternative, which is to wait until our September meeting, we'll lose a third of that valuable time and very well fail in our mission to elect Democrats. I would hope that nobody here wants us to fail uh, when there are eligible, deserving candidates anxiously awaiting our support. I believe that being active is, is the first part of activism, so I'd prefer we do not take the passive. Okay, thank you, Jordan. Is there anyone, a uh, member or PCO, who'd like to speak against changing the agenda to include these two endorsements? Raise up your hand if you have words against. All right, well, that makes it pretty easy. So first we'll vote on this amendment and then we'll go back to the original um, motion. Well, well, we'll get a motion to adopt the entire agenda. All right, so if unless anybody has issues, I think uh, uh, we can do this by uh, pure uh, voice vote. So if you can unmute. Um, uh -huh. All those in favor of, sorry, Thomas, could you repeat the amendment, please? Yes, the, the amendment would be to update the agenda to include two additional endorsements this evening for Seattle City Council position nine and then Seattle City Attorney. That is the amendment to the ag proposed agenda. So if you raise your hand, you would be in favor of amending the agenda. I thought Sorry. you were taking a voice. Yeah, you're, 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 right. you're, you're totally right, Anne. Thank you. Uh, if you say aye, you are in favor of changing the agenda. And then we'll aye. to nay. Aye. 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 Hey. Yes. Hey. Yes. Hey. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Anyone hey. opposed, please say nay. Nay. Oh, I nay. nay. I meant to say aye. All right. I think I heard three nays, so I think everyone will agree that the ayes have it. So we will amend the agenda. We will take those two endorsements after 
the hearing any motions to endorse the charter amendment. Okay. I All move. Right. I move. This is Ann Martin. I move uh, the agenda as amended. Thank you, Ann. Is there a second? Chris Porter, second. Thank you, Chris. All those in favor, let's go one more time. Aye, please. Aye. 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 All right. Anyone opposed, please say nay. All right. We have an approved agenda with the amendment. Moving on to the minutes. Everyone got the minutes and everyone who's a member or a PCO got the minutes in email on Saturday, along with several other documents. Always send out, sent out on Sunday, excuse me, not Saturday, Sunday. Um, these minutes are from our July meeting. Does anyone have any changes or corrections to the minutes? Okay, any corrections or changes? All right, hearing none, let's play the game again. Unmute, say aye to approve the minutes. Aye. 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 <laughs> Anyone opposed? Say nay, please. All right. Thank you very much. We will move on with these uh, minutes as presented. Julie. Uh, our treasurer, Julie Whitaker, will present the monthly treasurer's report. This report was emailed also on Sunday. Uh, we'll be reviewing the proposed revised budget later on in the meeting after the exciting endorsements. Julie? Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, this month, our beginning balance was $41,139.15. Our income was $912. Our expenses were $6,106.98. Our end balance is $35,944.17. And we're now up to 551 members. Wow. Awesome. Wow is right. That's a big wow. That's a big wow. Thank you, King County Executive Race. Appreciate that. All right. Um, anybody have any um, questions around the treasurer's report? Okay. There being no, none, we'll uh, file this report for audit. Thank you, Julie. All right, um, let's see. So um, moving on to the exciting part of the evening. Um, I know that you uh, may have, uh, with me, been <laughs> surprised about some of the results on Tuesday. Um, we certainly um, had planned tonight to cover our um, reconsideration of the mayor's race. Uh, we also have a Highline School Board candidate with us tonight. Uh, uh, Jennifer spoke with us uh, last month, and we'll, we will consider the charter amendment. Um, as I mentioned, we'll add those two new, um, the, the two other races to the end. Um, so let's get started with that. I'm going to get into just a few uh, tips. Just again, uh, we, we've done this a couple times, but I want to make sure everybody knows how this is gonna work. Um, problems with voting, two people on one machine wanna vote, you need to text your vote to our external vote manager, Dawn. Um, her number is on screen and it's also in the chat um, in the participants pane. Um, any questions about voting? Also, you may Zoom chat with Dawn. All right, endorsement and voting process. Um, just want to remind everyone, our bylaws clearly state that candidates must be a declared Democrat. Uh, we will not be, re any, any, any motion otherwise will be out of order. Um, this is something that the state is taking up. When the state decides how they're going to deal with it, then we'll come back and potentially change our bylaws. But until then, must be a declared Democrat. I know there's lots of discussion about it, but it won't happen tonight. Speaking, motioning, voting eligibility. Um, to vote tonight, if you're a renewal member, member, excuse me, you needed to have uh, joined or rejoined, renewed, 
and um, by last night at nine o'clock. Um, if you're a brand new member, haven't been at what weren't a member last year, you needed to have joined by the 11th. You also must re reside in the district. We have uh, a validated list of our members um, tonight, so we will be looking at that as the votes come in. And again, just uh, um, text your vote if you need to do that. Again, the way that we're going to do this, I will open the floor for motions. Um, please raise your hand to make a motion. Um, please make sure you're eligible um, to speak. Uh, you have to be a member or a PCO to do that. Um, once we have all the motions and seconds, we then will have, uh, we'll, I'll close the nominations and then we'll have speeches. We'll start with a speech four. We'll go to an against. If there's, um, and if there's an against, then we'll go back to four and then against. So two and two, um, that's the maximum. Um, the person who makes the motion, I will ask you first um, if you're going to speak to the motion. You may also um, uh, defer to the, to the uh, nominee if you wish, and you will have two minutes to speak. Um, if you're speaking against the motion, um, you need to be sure, sorry, uh, you need to be sure that you're not speaking in favor of the other candidate. Those will be ruled out of order. And I know I screwed that up this summer, not ruling it, people out of order. So please don't do that because I don't want to have to interrupt you. Just speak against the nomination of that person, um, not for your candidate. Okay. Once all the speeches are completed, we'll do the same sort of ballot vote as we've done the past couple couple months and that's worked uh, really well. All right, um, three ballots max. First ballot, uh, you must have 60%. If it does not yield a 60% winner, then we'll move to the second ballot. Uh, that ballot will have the top two vote getters and um, it will not have no endorsement. Um, the third ballot is a choice it must be motioned to do a third ballot, and it's a yes or no vote um, for dual endorsement. Yes or no to dual endorsement. Okay. And of course, that also is 60%. All right. Um, again, raise your hand if you want to make a motion. Um, I I will repeat this again. Uh, most of the candidates have asked uh, certain people uh, to make their motions and their seconds. So don't be offended if I don't call on you. <laughs> um, it is usually uh, by the request of the candidate. Um, we're gonna do this in one minute. We've seen how fast this works. Um, so please be ready. We're gonna do it in a minute and it will count down on screen for you. Um, and also those texting, be ready to text right away. It's your responsibility to vote during the window. Um, don't motion for a, a dual endorsement, please. Um, it's out of order. Same thing with soul. Um, and obviously, as I mentioned, mentioned um, before, motions to endorse candidates who aren't Democrats are out of order. So don't bother. If you are speaking against a motion, again, you may not give a speech for the other candidate also out of order. All right, are we ready? We're gonna start with uh, the mayor's race. Um, I know that, uh, I've, okay, great. I've got my two, my two folks here. Let's start with James, uh, James Car Williams. Carla, excuse me, this is Anne. Uh, are you going to want me to turn on my timer for the speeches? Yes, please. Okay. I'll give you a second to do that. Sorry, I should have called it out, Anne. Um, are you able to share? There we go. Great. And thank you, Dawn, for putting your uh, number in the chat. All right. Starting with James Williams. Um, go ahead. Madam Chair, I move to endorse Bruce Harrell for mayor 
uh, of the city of Seattle. Thank you. James, uh, appreciate that. Is there a second? Uh, this is Carolyn Ladd, I'll second. Okay, thank you. Um, be sure, okay, all right, great. Um, so we've got a motion from James Williams to endorse Bruce Harrell and a second from Carolyn Ladd. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, are there any other motions from the floor? I see uh, Joe Fitzgibbon, go ahead, please. Thank you, Carla. Uh, I'd like to um, move the endorsement of Lorena Gonzalez for mayor. Thank you. Um, I, is Lisa in the house? I had Lisa on, uh, Lisa Herbold on the list for Lorena. I can I go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, so we have Joe Fitzgibbon has nominated Lorena Councilwoman Gonzalez for mayor and seconded by Lisa Herbold. Okay, are there any other nominations? I don't think that we can do that. Nominations are now closed. Thank you. All right, starting with James. Uh, James, would you like to speak to your motion or uh, are you going to defer? No, no, I'm speaking to this. <laughs> All right, go right ahead. You have two minutes. All right, uh, I've known Bruce Harrell for well over 20 years. I first met him through what's called the Lauren Miller Bar Association. For those who don't know what that is, that's the African-American Civil Rights Organization, uh, primarily focused on African-American issues, but civil rights issues overall. So I know Bruce has been doing civil rights for a very long time. He's a hometown hero. You should know that he went to Garfield, uh, was a valedictorian of his class, and then on the University of Washington where he started on the football team. The three things you need to know about Bruce are the following. Number one, Bruce has always been an advocate for the people. As a class action lawyer, plaintiff lawyer, uh, when he was practicing law, he represented people of color and women in class action cases where they were being discriminated against by employers. Understand that he has always been there representing people who are being oppressed by the system. And he did it as a lawyer when he was practicing as well as someone who is now in the public sector. The second thing you need to know about him is he's deeply rooted into the African-American community and the Asian community. His father was African-American, his mother Japanese. Third, Bruce is big on police accountability and at the same time on second chances for people who have run afoul of the law. I say that because Bruce led the charge on getting body cams for police officers. And at the same time, he was the one who authored legislation to ban the box. You ought to know that he is endorsed by trailblazers such as Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland, the first Asian black person ever elected to Congress in the state of Washington, Mayor Norm Rice, the first African-American two-term mayor for the city, Gary Locke, the first Asian ever to sit as King County Executive and uh, Governor, and Larry Gossett, the civil rights icon himself, who has a very large shadow in this county. Bruce, I'm supporting him because I want to return for normalcy. You should vote for him too. Thank you, James. Is there any member or PCO that would like to speak against this nomination? And Martin, you have your hand up, but it's been up for a while. Do you mean to do that? Are you speaking against? Okay, thank you, ma'am. No, I, I apologize uh, in getting the timer going. I no worries. I forgot to un. No problem. No problem. Sorry. All right. Anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. Very good. Um, Representative Fitzgibbon, would you like to speak for your motion or do you want to yield your time to Councilwoman Gonzalez? Thanks, Carla. I'll speak very briefly. Um, I um, am honored to nominate Lorena for, uh, for our endorsement for mayor. I think Lorena uh, uh, has really impressed me in her understanding that, that the big crises facing our city, the housing crisis, the climate crisis, and the the racial reckoning um, that's come in the in the wake of, of George Floyd's murder um, are not separate issues, and that our our solutions to those problems need to be inter, uh, interrelated and build on each other. And so um, that's all I wanted to say. But I would like to yield the remainder of my time uh, to Councilmember Gonzalez. 
Um, thank you so much, Representative Fitzgibbon, and to my fellow 34th Legislative District Democrats. As a lifelong Democrat, I know that the gap between the rich and the rest of us makes living in Seattle too hard for so many of us. Housing and rent are extraordinarily expensive. Wages are simply not keeping up with the cost of living in this city, and our working families are suffering every day when we don't live up to our potential. That's why I believe we need to ensure that wealthy corporations finally pay their fair share to help us solve our most urgent needs. I'm running for mayor to bring Seattle together, together to build a city of safe, livable neighborhoods where essential services are available to all of us within a 15 minute walk, bus or bike ride to reduce our carbon emissions. Together, I believe we can solve homelessness by addressing the root causes of poverty and income inequality. That's why my plan focuses on rapidly building affordable housing while providing services and shelter to help the unhoused restart their lives immediately. I'll demilitarize the police, hold bad cops accountable, uh, and expand the civilian community service officer program to uh, improve our public safety throughout the city. From, being, from bringing council together on uh, things like uh, sensible gun safety laws and, uh, na and national firsts around labor standards to helping Seattle small businesses and families survive our pandemic, I am a proven progressive and that, that is a record that I wanna build on as mayor. And that's why I've earned the endorsements of so many progressive de Democrats, including Congressman Pramila Jayapal and many others. Thank you for your time, hope to earn your support. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone, a PCO or a member, who'd like to speak against this nomination? Anyone want to speak against? Okay, fantastic. All right, so our speeches uh, are wrapped up. Um, would either of the campaigns want to go in to observe the tally? We can, uh, if you do, uh, you or your anyone from your campaign, if you could send a note to Sarah Koch and she will bring you in. And it will be exciting. Love Love you. Send me up. Love you. I'll just right. show you what to do next time. That's fine. I was gonna open the window. Oops. Oh. <laughs> All right. I think oh. everybody needs to go on mute. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, great. Um, Jordan, if you uh, uh, would like to launch um, our poll there, we will take our first ballot. Again, I'd like to do this in a minute if we can. Okay, we're at 80% participation. Let's get that number up. Eighty-two percent. Recognizing that some folks on the call are not in our district. So I get that. All right, 72 folks have answered and I haven't seen anything change. We're at a minute 17. So I think we can go ahead and close, uh, close down the poll. Right, let's uh, let, let them have a few moments to tally. Um, I'd like to, if it's okay, um, go ahead with some additional uh, speeches um, and nominations. Um, let's see, let me get down here on my agenda. All right, uh, let's go ahead with uh, Highline School Board position number two. Um, I see Nancy Kick. Um, would you like to uh, make a motion? Yes, I'd like to nominate Jennifer Fachamba. Crystal Marks, I second. Thank you. 
That's Nancy Kick with the motion and Crystal Marks with the second to nominate Jennifer Fashamba. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? All right, hearing none, I will close down nominations. Given that we only have one nominee, I'd like to suggest um, um, that after we have our uh, uh, speech, our speeches, we uh, vote using raising our hands. So uh, be locating that button uh, while we're listening to um, um, the speeches. Uh, Nancy, uh, would you like to speak to your motion? Um, yeah, just briefly, I would like to um, say that I'm nominating Jennifer because she's a leader in our community who knows how to bring people together to solve complex problems. Um, I want to see her on the school board so that she can use her position to raise up voices of students and educators um, in creating a better educational experience for all kids in the Highline School District, and I'd like to cede the rest of my time to Jennifer. Thank you so much, Nancy, for those kind words, and thank you to the 34th Democrats for giving me the opportunity to speak to you again. Um, I was here just last month, and so I'm sure you're aware that I'm an educator that's um, running for school board. And I'm running for school board because I believe educators belong on school boards. I am a college and career specialist in the Tuck Willis School District. I was born and raised in Burien, and I attended Gregory Heights Elementary, Sylvester Middle School, and Highline High School. My son just graduated also from Highline High School this past June, and so it's a perfect time for me to run for school board. Um, Nancy's correct. I believe it's important that when decisions are being made by school boards that we are centering the voices of our students, our families, and our educators. It's their education, not ours. We need to make sure that we're not just making decisions for them. They need to be a part of the advocacy that happens. The other part um, that I'm really passionate about is partnering with the municipalities in which we serve. In this case, it is Burien, White Center, Normandy Park, Des Moines, and SeaTac. I think that we need to begin building bridges of resources because we cannot let our kids just fall by the wayside as it's been happening for so many years. And I really, really would appreciate your endorsement this evening. So thank you so much for taking time to hear from me. Thank you so much, Jennifer. All right, is there anyone opposed to the endorsement? Anyone want to speak in opposition? Please raise your hand. Okay, I see no one. All right, well, let's, um, let's just do a nice easy vote with our hands. Um, all those in favor of endorsing Jennifer Fishamba for Highline School Board position two, please raise your hand. I need to get to about, okay. of those voting, we are clearly in, in, in uh, favor. Um, Jennifer, congratulations. You have our nominee, you have our endorsement. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, excellent. All right, earlier this evening, we had a uh, very lively uh, program for, before our meeting started. Um, and um, I, I specifically had that uh, as part of our, um, uh, or the early part of our meeting, because I do want to provide, you know, those of you who are voting um, information. And I think we got a lot of information and a lot of, lot of conversation there. So, um, glad that that came together all in one night. Um, would anyone like to <clears throat> would anyone like to make a motion? Um, let me let me just be very specific how we will be doing this. Um, this ballot would be um, uh, in support of, rejection of, or we would take no position on the amendment. So our action here, is to vote on the amendment itself. By virtue of our action, our position will be clear. So um, you, again, would be in support of, rejection of, or we would take no position. So again, we need to start with a motion. Would anyone like to make a motion about Amendment 29? Um, again, um, raise your hand. Do 
Julie? No, I'm unmuted. Um, yes, I would like to make a motion that we support the Compassion Seattle Charter Amendment 29. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Who seconded? Cody. Thank you, Eileen. All right, so we have a motion on the floor to, to in support of the Charter Amendment 29, Compassion Seattle, seconded by Eileen Cody. All right, Julie, would you like to speak to your motion? Well, I um, was at the meeting starting at six and I lis listened to both sides. Um, the main thing I got out of it was that both um, want the same things. What I did, the result I came to was that the charter amendment is actually making the city do something. Um, the other um, homeless thing, um, I'm sorry, I can't think of it right now. How's our um, neighbors? Yeah, how's our neighbors? I kept asking, but, but what is that plan? What is their plan? What, how are they gonna do it? How, and I never heard an answer to that. And it's so critical that I feel we've got to try to do something, at least this way, the ball is rolling and they have to live up to it and do something. So yes, um, there's a lot more that needs to be done. And she had many, many valid points. I just think that if we can get it started, I don't see why they can't work together and actually get something accomplished. Otherwise nothing gets done and it, it just stays the same. And I don't think that's right. I think we should do what we can to get something done. Okay. Thank you. All right, would anyone like to speak against the motion to support King County Charter Amendment 29? Um, okay, let's go, uh, let's go with Roxanne. Okay, um, I am not as educated on this as some people are. However, I do know that uh, some of the authors of Compassion Seattle are actually in Utah. Uh, this has more to do with corporate America than it does with helping the homeless. Uh, today, the, um, uh, the Seattle Times reported today that the ACLU and, and a lot of advocates for the homeless have filed a lawsuit over the C Compassion Seattle ballot initiative. And there are uh, a number of reasons for that. Um, uh, part of them is um, it's more focused on clearing the streets than it is helping the homeless. And um, uh, I'm gonna read a little quote from it. The complaint filed in King County Superior Court argues tactics used by Charter Amendment 29 to make, the, and to make things happen. An amendment to the city's bedrock document, its charter expires six years, bends Washington law too far and contradicts work on the county level to make the region's homelessness response less Seattle centric. Um, so generally speaking, um, it's not really there to help the people. And I'm gonna cede my time to anyone else who'd like to chime in and uh, share more information on that. Got 32 seconds. Any of, uh, Crystal, would you like to go? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, I would. Um, I'm speaking against this because uh, the, what is being proposed by Compassion Seattle um, would basically be uh, codifying sweeps um, in Seattle's uh, city charter or, or moving forward from that point on. People are not trash to be swept. We have to stand against this mentality that sweeps are any form of compassion. As someone who is uh, homeless myself as a child in Grace Harbor County, something like this would have killed my family. And I cannot speak enough against this uh, charter amendment. Crystal? All right, let's switch back over to, um, uh, is there anyone, and um, I'm gonna anticipate uh, Hannah and Art, you, you may be holding your hand up to speak against. 
Is there anyone that would like to speak in favor of this endorsement? Art or Hannah, either of you in favor? Anyone else want to speak in favor? Okay. So we've had one speech for, one speech against. If anyone wants to speak for, this is your last shot. And Hannah and Art, seems like you both want to speak against, but um, I'm, I, I'm happy to have you unmute yourself if you want to speak for. Okay. All right. Well, hey, Carla, I'm, yes. I'm just a little, I just want to make sure that is it that we does there need to be a motion to not endorse i was just a little unclear and i wanted to make sure that if that was the case that yep. that was done. um great point um and i may have been a little unclear in my description of this so uh, the vote that we're going to take you will be able to vote in support of endorsement in rejection of, of the amendment or not take a position. As a, as a 34th, we would not take a position. You'll have three choices. Great, so, thanks for clarifying. Sure thing. I, I'm, I, I'm not sure I'm clear on that, Carla. Can, if, if we reject this now, is it possible to make a motion to um, say, we support a reject vote on the uh, amendment. So what? So if uh, when we vote, if you click reject, that is exactly what that is. W will that then become an official position? If sixty yes. percent of the people say reject, then we have endorsed a reject the amendment. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No, I was very confused about this and I was talking with Gina about it right before the meeting. So uh, great question. It is a little complicated, but um, that is correct. All right, I'm gonna- um, Sorry, that... I did raise my hand. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing it now, go ahead. Um, similar to Anne, I'm, I'm still confused. Uh, if, uh, reject uh, vote does not get 60%, then we have not endorsed, in my opinion, we have not endorsed reject. We have just not endorsed. Am I correct? So you're, you're, the question um, is, yes? I just want to take another stab at explaining this. Uh, right. So there are three options on the ballot. So the first is to support Charter Amendment 29, which means that we support the Charter Amendment. The second option would be to reject Charter Amendment 29, meaning that we oppose the Charter Amendment. And the third option is to take no position. So we would remain neutral. So if any of those three options get 60%, then that is our position. We can either be pro 29, opposed to 29, or neutral. Can a uh, point, really? point of clarification. I, I, I think I agree with Les and Anne that if we take an official stand that is against Charter Amendment 29, I think we have to make a motion for that. I, I think Les and Anne, um, you're saying that we have to make a motion to reject 29 and we would all vote in support of majority of support of that as opposed to just not endorsing the support. I think we have to make a specific motion for reject. That is not what my parliamentarian said. Um, Gina, do you have any uh, further clarifying words of wisdom? So for, for policy measures, Good. for policy measures, our bylaws state that there are three choices that we can that can be made on the first ballot. We are, and, and Jordan is correct, is support, reject, or no position. And it is one, are we supporting referendum? One, are we 
supporting, uh, are we rejecting referendum 29 or are we taking no position on referendum 29? Those are our three options um, on the floor right now. So the question is, um, what, what does the 34th say about uh, amendment 29? Support, reject, or no position? If none receives the 60%, then we take it to a, a top two vote getters. We'll go to a second ballot and we will take a vote on the second ballot between whatever got the uh, top two votes in the first ballot. Does that make sense? So, yes, thank you. It does make sense. However, I think because a motion was made to specifically support it, that, that we may need to redo the motion, which is these are the three options and that the motion wouldn't be the support motion, that the motion is just 29 is on the floor and we are and we to choose. I, Yes, I, I amendment, the, the motion should be amendment 29 is on the floor for consideration yeah. for support, reject, or no position. That was my point. Thank you, Gina, for clarification. Okay, Les. I did not have my hand up, but Art Chippendale yeah. did. You, you actually do. I will lower it. My, my mistake. Art. That's okay. So we had a motion uh, to um, support this amendment. We now need a motion to reject this amendment and have that, that spoken to. And then we need a motion to, um, to simply take no position. No. That's and not what Dina was just saying was that what we need to do is go back and amend the motion. So that it's just to consider the, this for a minute, to have it on the floor for discussion, which we've we've already technically had discussion. But just having the official motion official. to be the consideration of Charter Amendment Twenty Nine, so that we can take a position. We don't need to go into adding debate for other things to add to that. We don't need to treat these as separate candidates. It's we, because it's a policy motion. Is that what you're saying? Because yeah. it is a policy measure, we our bylaws give us we, we do not need to treat them as separate campaigns. Uh, so they are okay. not as separate campaigns. It is a whether we decide to support, reject, or take no position on the, on this one vote. Um, which then will align us possibly with one campaign or the other or no campaign at all. Um, however, we do, I, I would say it would be helpful if we could amend the motion that was stated. Okay, so Julie, would you like to amend okay. your motion, please? Julie, would you like to okay. okay, so I amend the motion to make a motion for consideration of the Charter Amendment 29. Is that yes, correct? That is right. Thank you. Okay. Good. All right. Chris, you have your hand up. Yes. Call the question. <laughs> and I'll second, I'll just offhand, just to make it, I'll, I'll second the amendment. I think we already had a second with Eileen, but you're, uh, I think we're okay. Um, and seconds the amended motion, just in case we needed it. All right, so first off, let's throw that ballot up there. Again, support Charter Amendment 29, reject Charter Amendment, Amendment 29, or take no position. Those are your choices. So let's take that ballot. And uh, Jordan, uh, do you have results? Yes, for the mayor's race, uh, I have Council Member Lorena Gonzalez with 52 votes and uh, Bruce Harrell with 16, uh, meaning that Lorena Gonzalez has won our endorsement 
with 76.5% of the vote. Congratulations, council member. All right. Thank you so much. And um, okay, we've got our ballot up here. A question, Jordan, were there any no endorsement votes or? There were zero no endorsement votes. Okay. All right, we're at a minute with 69 of 84 of you voting. So I think there may be one or two of you have, who have not yet voted based on the last vote. Give you a few more seconds, and then we're going to close it down. Um, I just quick question. This is Rachel. Can can we put those numbers, the percentages of how many votes people got, into the chat just so that we can see it? If people missed it. I'd I'd like Jordan Jordan be able to concentrate on the next ballot. Um, we we report the tally after. The meeting. I'd, I'd also like to validate it before we start reporting things out. Which is what we did last time. So the validation will happen after the meeting? Yes. Okay. Jordan, the tally committee submits a, an official report and Jordan in his efficiency usually gets it to me within a day or two. So and I post that up on the website. Um, and also put it in um, our emails. Great, thank so, you. So just point of clarification on that. So Trey has already run a, val a vote validation. So we already know that all of the votes were valid votes. Essentially over the next 12 hours or so, um, we're just going through a double and triple check of that to make sure that there are zero errors whatsoever. Um, cool. thank the you. official report will be out either tomorrow or Friday. Thanks, Jordan. All right, great. And we have closed um, Charter Amendment 29 ballot. Thanks everyone for voting there. So let's move on to our amended agenda items. Um, I'd like to hear nominations for Seattle City Council position nine. Uh, please raise your hand in Zoom. And uh, Jordan, go right ahead. Uh, I move that we, uh, I move to nominate the endorsement of Sarah Nelson for Seattle City Council position. Jordan, is there a second? Second. I second that uh, motion, Chris Jansen. Thank you, Chris. So Jordan Crowley moved to endorse Sarah Nelson and Chris Jansen has seconded. Thank you both. Um, are there any other nominations? All right, hearing none, everyone listen to my directions, thank you. All right, nominations are now closed. Uh, Jordan, would you like to speak to your motion? Yes, hi everyone. Um, in June, I had the pleasure of nominating Sarah Nelson for our endorsement. And I'm asking again that we support for candidacy. Uh, Sarah has the endorsement of various unions, current and former elected officials, the founder of Mothers for Police Accountability, and the chair of SPD's African American Advisory Commission. Her campaign has demonstrated that a partnership between the people of Seattle, our government, and private industry is just an election away. I said in June that Seattle needs a candidate who adopts and acts upon the principles of activism and justice, candidate who will approach our social, economic, and political shortcomings with courage, integrity, and dedication, and a candidate who will take bold, unequivocal action to, to stop cycles of injustice and lead a life of progressivism and pragmatism. I believe Sarah to have these qualities. Sarah understands how vital reform is to our criminal legal system, especially to policing, that accountability should not be optional nor occasional. She sees our shortfalls with homelessness and is prepared to manage a model of response based on individual case management, housing fused with services, and real-time provider coordination. Sarah recognizes that progress is a process which pulls us toward prosperity and that it's our responsibility to keep the wheels turning. 
as a lifelong Democrat, as the only Democrat remaining in this race, for everything she stands for and for everything she has and will come to do for this city, Sarah Nelson deserves our endorsement for City of Seattle, uh, City Seattle City Council Position Nine. Um, I will cede the remainder of my time to the candidate. All right, Sarah, you have twenty-eight seconds. Sarah, I think I saw you out there. I hate it when I do that. God, you'd think <laughs> that this far along into the campaign, I would have learned. Anyway, thank you very much for this opportunity uh, to endorse me tonight. I very much appreciate it. Jordan hit many of the important points. Lifelong Democrat. I, I've caucused in almost every single presidential um, election here in Seattle. I've only lived here about 31 years, but I appreciate the opportunity. I am... Um, a uh, progressive small business owner and the stakes are high in Seattle and voters have a very clear choice and I'm running to get Seattle back on track and thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. Is there anyone who would like to speak against the motion to endorse Sarah Nelson for city council position nine? Um, Elena Perez. Yes, thank you. Um, I also was at the last endorsement meeting for Sarah Nelson and I spoke against um, Sarah Nelson's candidacy, primarily and unexpectedly because the, her campaign's entire speech when she was urging us to support her was a racialized attack targeting her opponent, a black woman running for the office, who is our neighbor in West Seattle. And I was appalled, I was shocked. I didn't expect to have to speak publicly, but um, nothing has changed. And frankly, we haven't gotten an apology from Sarah Nelson for that shameful strategy to racialize an attack against a black woman running for office. Um, so nothing has changed. I would urge my fellow LD34 members to refuse an endorsement. Any, any Democrat is not better than no Democrat um, in this situation. And uh, in the name of our values and everything we stand for, um, the, honoring the humanity and dignity of everyone, that uh, I, I just would urge my fellow Dem my fellow LD34 Dems um, to oppose endorsement and um, to stand for anti-blackness, uh, stand against anti-blackness. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, would anyone like to speak for the nomination of Sarah Nelson? All right, uh, let's go with Carolyn this time. Thank you, Madam Chair. I really appreciate uh, Elena's comments and I wanted to cede my time to Sarah Nelson uh, to give her an opportunity to respond. So Sarah, if you're out there, we'll give you, we'd like to hear what you have to say. I am here and I would like to say that that was not the campaign that said that. Um, and uh, that is what I have to say. Um, that was somebody that was speaking for me and I did not, um, those, vo those words did not come out of my mouth. So um, I wish to be judged on my merits, on uh, my platform, on my endorsements and the fact that I want to um, bring people together in this time of, of crisis. And as we're emerging from this pandemic, and I believe that I have the, um, the support and the uh, policy proposals to do so. Um, you know, we can't mess around here in Seattle. As I said before, we are at a tipping point and we can elect a candidate um, who has um, policy proposals that are very, very specific. We can, we can just elect the same old thing, doing some things the same old way that got us here in the first place. So um, if you like how Seattle is right now, if you think things are going well, I might not be your candidate. 
but um, I am running very hard on behalf of the whole city to try to um, forge an equitable recovery for Seattle. Thank you. Um, let's go back to anyone who want to speak against. Um, Chris Porter, are you uh, raising your hand to speak against? Oh. Is that a yes? Uh, I am. Okay. I am. Hello? You're on. Madam Chair? Yes. Hello? Oh, I guess, am I on? You are on. Yes, okay. Um, Chris Porter, I could almost get past what she has just said, except for the fact that uh, some years ago, a candidate by the name of Mark Hens ran for the state party chair. He failed to vet one of his speakers who said some horrific things for in his campaign for his nomination. It is the duty of that camp of that uh, candidate to make sure that they vetted their speakers. And in the event that that speaker goes off rail and says those things that are not consistent with their campaign, that candidate has to take responsibility, apologize and set their campaign back on. I am just mortified. Well, I didn't say it, so it's, it was the campaign. Well, you are the campaign. You're the one who's seeking the endorsement and hopefully the vote of the support in this district. So I'm just appalled at that response and that lack of ownership and, and accountability in your campaign, and yet you still would like us to seek uh, to give you the endorsement. And I would have been able to look past it had you not made that statement, sort of divorcing yourself from the campaign and someone who spoke in support of you and not taking the time to vet that person to make sure that what they were going to say was consistent with what you say are the values in your campaign. So for that reason, I would urge members to either uh, do a no or take no position. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chris. All right, speeches are now closed. Jordan, are you ready for um, the ballot or do you have uh, results to share? Your choice. Uh, yes, on both counts. So I will launch the poll and then report the results for Charter Amendment 29. Uh, so for the results for the Charter Amendment, uh, the adjusted tallies show 12 votes for supporting the Charter Amendment, 46 for rejecting the Charter Amendment, and nine for no position. So uh, the 34th our official position is to reject Charter Amendment 29 with 68.7% of the vote. Okay, thank you. All right, we are, as a 34th organization, rejecting Charter Amendment 29 officially. All right, and um, looks like we have uh, 68 sorry, 62 uh, folks have voted on Seattle City Council position nine. Let's wrap up the votes there. Okay. As we wrap up, we'll go on with um, city attorney. So anyone wishing to speak, um, around the Seattle city attorney race, uh, please get ready. Okay, 63 people have voted. I haven't seen a change in a few seconds. So I think we can go ahead and move on. Jordan, close when you wish. All right, hearing motions from the floor for Seattle city attorney. I see Leah Griffin. I move to nominate Nicole Thomas Kennedy for Seattle City Attorney endorsement. Okay, thank you, Leah. Uh, is there a second? Crystal Marks, I second. Okay. Sounds great. Um, are there any other motions from the floor for Seattle City Attorney? Okay. 
I see, I see nothing. So nominations are now closed. Uh, Leah, would you like to speak to your motion? I would love to. I really wish that Nicole Thomas Kennedy could be here to, to speak, uh, but she didn't know that this amendment would be made. So I'm gonna do my best to explain why I'm in support of her endorsement. I wanna talk a little bit about trauma, uh, specifically the trauma of the carceral system and uh, uh, people in a society that choose to incarcerate individuals for poverty and, and for misdemeanor charges. We have a Republican opponent in this race who is an avowed incarcerationist who wants to solve Seattle's problems by putting people in prison uh, and scare people by saying that a, a person who doesn't want to put more people in prison will allow uh, violent crimes like sexual assault to occur. I work in the sexual assault field. I am a survivor and advocate. This is the field that I know. It is not what the Seattle City Attorney does. What we have right now is an opportunity to endorse a candidate who is trauma-informed, who understands that if we can take resources from incarcerating for crimes of poverty and put those resources into actually healing trauma and solving problems, then we can have a better society. Uh, this I understand because we previously endorsed Pete Holmes that there are a lot of people who are in the middle of this conversation and I, I hear you. And I wanna encourage you as a survivor advocate, as somebody who works day in and day out on violent crimes, that supporting a city attorney who is trauma informed and wants to heal trauma as opposed to further traumatized through incarceration this is such an opportunity for us as Democrats to say, these are our values. This is important to us. We can use resources in a way that will heal people and not imprison them. And I really urge your support for Nicole Thomas Kennedy. Thank you, Leah. Um, is there anyone who would like to speak against this nomination? Um, James Williams, go ahead. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Recording a, in progress. I'm progress. against it because I think progress. abolition, there's a feedback coming in, I can't, there you go. Uh, abolition of all misdemeanors equals allowing trespasses on your land and stealing from Target and from anywhere else with no prosecution and no repercussions. And what that's gonna do is encourage people to essentially become lawless. Uh, so I cannot abide by that as someone who is an officer of the court and believes in the rule of law. You can't believe both. It's a binary choice. Either you believe in the rule of law or you don't. Abolition of misdemeanor offenses is saying you don't believe in the rule of law. Second thing is qualifications matter. We're talking about being the chief law enforcement officer for the city. Having only four years of experience as a lawyer isn't much. It's actually not much at all if you're practicing law. And most people know that it takes at least 10,000 hours of the practice of law to even understand uh, how it works. So I am concerned deeply about someone who is not qualified having control of the decision-making process for the city's uh, law enforcement. I think um, that's not a wise thing for us to do as a city. Thank you. Thank you, James. Is there anyone else who would like to speak for the motion this evening? Roxanne? I would like to say that it would be refreshing to have someone who's not been a uh, an attorney for a really long time and, and uh, come to a fairly shaded view of uh, what, what crime is and isn't. Uh, we put people in poverty in a cycle of poverty because uh, they're arrested if they you know, steal a, uh, a package of lunch meat for their kids to eat and they go to jail and then they have the cost of, um, the, co the costs incurred by going to jail are pretty horrific and steep. Uh, and they can include losing your children. And I'm gonna cede the rest of my time to Leah Griffin 
to speak further uh, for the candidate. Okay, Leah. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for that, but I would like to, to respond with uh, incarceration and accountability don't have to, are, are not our are, are options. Uh, these crimes of, of theft and vandalism and crimes of poverty, uh, there can still be accountability for these crimes without incarceration. And I think that when we think about ways that we can transform our system to hold people accountable, because James is absolutely right. There has to be accountability. There has to be uh, people held to account for what they do. But that doesn't mean that we have to incarcerate people for crimes of poverty. And when we have a stark choice between somebody fresh and new and committed to progressive ideals and goals and somebody who says that they want to incarcerate as many people as possible, I think we as Democrats have to stand on the side of reparation, uh, the side of accountability, the side of letting people make mistakes and have their trauma healed and grow and learn and be better. And I want us to be that party. And I, I certainly don't want people to not be held in account, but I, I don't think that it's necessary to incarcerate them for crimes of poverty. Thank you. All right, anyone um, wishing to speak against last speech? Anyone else wanting to speak against? I see no one. Um, Jordan, do we have a result? Uh, would you like to do a result first and uh, a, a ballot as well? Yep, I'll do it at the same time again. Uh, so I will launch the poll for Seattle City Attorney. And for the endorsement in Seattle City Council position nine, uh, the adjusted totals show 15 for Sarah Nelson and 44 for no endorsement meaning that we have chosen not to endorse in the Seattle City Council Position 9 race uh, with 74.6% of the vote. Okay, thank you. All right, no endorsement in the Seattle City Council Position 9 race. And uh, I've got 52 folks voting so far in the city attorney race. And then we will be wrapping up our endorsements for the evening. But we have lots more to do. Um, okay. Question. I have yes. a question. Yes. My hand is up. So <laughs> uh, is it is it possible for the other candidate, Nikita Oliver, to um, no. present to us? No. No. Okay. She's, she is a, a declared non-democrat so not possible to be endorsed by this body all right uh while you guys are wrapping up your voting uh 60 people have voted uh seems like a few more of you uh should be voting uh please wrap that up i'm gonna go ahead and move on <clears throat> changing gears to put a spotlight on another great candidate we have in the 34th madam uh, chair yes uh, yes, uh, this is Marcy Stone Vekic. I'm asking uh, whether or not we can't also speak for and against regarding no endorsement in this race that you were you just were um, uh, for a uh, city attorney. Because there is a third choice, isn't that right? It's a third choice, but it's an automatic option on the ballot. It's not something that's debated. Well, I'm not sure that's true um, because it is it's an option. So far, we've been able to have for and against on the two candidates. I think an option to also uh, do this in regards to no endorsement uh, would make some sense. It's it's true as per our endorsement rules. It's an automatic option on the ballot. The candidates are debatable. They they're getting on the ballot is up for debate. No, endor no endorsement is not up for debate to get into the ballot. Um, as I understand it, you are not the um, parliamentarian. Is the parliamentarian available? No, but I wrote the endorsement rules. Thank you, Martin. Okay, so the parliamentarian is not available? Um, Gina, are you here? 
I am here. I'm reading the candidate speech section. So give me just a second. Thank you. The only problem I'm seeing here is that we've already voted. So these... there was a vote on city attorney already. Yes. It, the, the ballot has been up for, uh, well, it's actually ended and it was up for uh, close to two minutes. Huh. Okay. Thank you. So I, I don't, I, um, I mean, honestly, I don't know what we would do at that point. Um, I think we kind of have to move, move forward. Uh, Gina, let, let me know when you. Uh, yeah, I think the, when know. it talks about speeches, it says um, speeches are heard for each candidate being considered for endorsement, not for the no endorsement option. So I don't think that there is a, there's a speech for no endorsement. Thank you. Is it, um, is it possible to uh, receive my ballot again? I'm not sure I received it. Um, um, Jordan, are you able to reopen the poll? I don't see that as an option for, oh, I do. Does anybody have any issues with relaunching the poll? None here. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so again. Um, oh. Yeah, I definitely didn't receive this, thank you. Hey, Carla, could you please clarify if we already voted, should we be voting again or should we be? Uh, this is, um, I did not realize a relaunch would mean that it would wipe out the results and we do it. So sorry, that's something we've never done before. Um, this is a revote. Um, please go ahead. I'm, I'm not sure, Jordan, do you have record of the last results or did we lose them by relaunching the poll? I was in the middle of assessing them now. Um, if Marcy is the only one who did not get a chance to vote, she can always send her vote to Dawn and then we can calculate it in at the end. So oh, I like that idea. Well, I, I did just vote in the poll that was just sent to me. Yeah, but we'd have to download these poll results, resend them to Trey and sift through to get Yeah. So like, if you just resend, if you send your vote to Dawn, then we can just like, get it in automatically. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, so you will ignore the second vote because yes. hey, some of us are fast since we only have a minute. All right. So this were we supposed to re-vote or not? No, you do not need to re-vote. We are okay. using the original results and Marcy is going to text her vote. And anyone else, um, please text your vote if you didn't already. Uh, text that in and that's how we'll roll. Okay, moving on. Um, Brandon, <laughs> um, are, you, How's it going? Uh, are you with us? Uh, take a few minutes to tell us a little bit about yourself. Yo, thank you so much. Uh, 34 Dims, it is an absolute pleasure to be sitting here with y'all tonight. Can everybody hear me okay? Can I get a thumbs up for yes, this one? Looking good. All right, yes. right on. Thank you. I appreciate that compliment. I needed that today. Uh, my name is Brandon Hersey. I am running to retain my seat on the Seattle School Board. I've been on for the past two years. Uh, I recently was appointed to succeed, or at least try my best to succeed, former director Betty Patu. Um, and I have had a wonderful time representing South Seattle and parts of the 34th uh, in Georgetown and, <clears throat> excuse me, in Georgetown and South Park. Um, I am really excited to uh, engage in this campaign for a number of reasons. First, a little bit about me. I'm originally from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I'm the son of an educator, the grandson of an educator, the great grandson of an educator, and I'm a teacher myself. In fact, my sister T is a vice principal at the high school where we all grew up uh, before my mother passed away from cancer when I was very young. Um, for the past five years, ever since living in Washington State, I've been teaching second grade down in the Federal Way Public School District, but living in South Seattle, I also work very closely serving as a scoutmaster for Troop 008, Washington State's first and only African American scout troop. Um, by serving my boys and living in my community, 
I have noticed firsthand that our school district was in a time of crisis and at a very stark crossroads, uh, which has only been highlighted and exacerbated over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm very proud of the progress that we've been able to make in reshifting our system to be focused on student outcomes, uh, what our students know and what they can do, actually tying hard metrics to the goals in our strategic plan, working to bring an end to isolation and reduce restraint in our district, lifting up a participatory budgeting initiative, among so many other things that have really moved the needle in terms of educational equity and opportunity for our students. Moving forward, there is still much work to do. We have to find a superintendent who's going to be able to navigate the Seattle process while hoping, or excuse me, while helping us hold our system accountable so that we can keep our students safe and free from racism and harm that they've been experiencing at the hands of adults in our system. Um, I am looking for your endorsement. I know that that won't necessarily happen tonight, but I believe strongly that together we can create a school district that authentically sees every single one of our students for who they are, and that adequately prepares them with a rigorous education that's going to best equip them to make whatever decision comes next for them post their secondary education. I also believe strongly that unless we can find a way to actually hold our system accountable to the goals that we have set forth for ourselves, then we are not going to realize the true potential that our students have within them and that we as a district need to position them to show. Um, I am so uh, looking forward to answering any questions that you might have. A little bit about the status of our campaign. We've been endorsed by State Senator Joe Wynn, uh, State Senator Rebecca Saldana, Council Member Gramai Zalahai, the Seattle Education Association, the 11th and 37th districts. So I hope that y'all will be joining them very soon and countless other parents, communities and students um, who are just really ready to see leadership that reflects our students and that are able to really make good on our promise of reaching and centering students furthest away from educational justice. I would also be more than happy to talk about any back to school updates and questions that you might have around that, either through questions tonight or I'd be more than happy to come back. Um, but I wanna stop talking and get to some of your questions. So I'll leave it at that and I look forward to chatting with y'all. Brandon, since we, uh, we, we added some stuff to our agenda, I wanna be respectful yeah, of people's bedtimes. Absolutely. Would you, would you put your email in our chat? Yeah. Um, and then anyone that has any specific questions can get to you uh, uh, one to one. Awesome. Okay, That'd cool. So let me respond to one message really yes, quickly. And, and yes, if, if, if you want a private message with people in chat, that's totally yeah. cool. We'd love to have you do that. Um, Absolutely. And, and we will look forward to having you back next month. Yeah. Thank awesome. you so much for your time. Right. Y'all have run things very efficiently. <laughs> oh, just wait. All right. Um, okay, so we are running a little further behind because of the additional um, items. I'm gonna. I'm kind of crafting down my my topics here. Just want to do um, a couple of. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and get this back up here so you can see and hear at the same time. That was Brandon. Okay. Um, some, some quick announcements. Um, we are looking for folks to help us with as we go back to uh, in person meetings. Um, our hospitality committee is merged with our membership committee. And we really just need greeters and folks to kind of help uh, get our uh, venues ready for us and get them, you know, uh, get them straightened out so we can leave for the evening. I'd love to have a couple folks step up and um, volunteer for that um, as we get ready for our uh, back to back in person meeting. So friendly faces needed. We want to make a really hospitable, welcoming environment for all types of Democrats. So uh, please let me know. Um, actually, please uh, send an email to volunteer at 34dems.org uh, to volunteer for this. So um, Sarah will put that in the chat for you if you need it. Um, again, thank you for um, helping us out with that. Um, I had announced last month that we'd hold an election tonight for our vacated King County Dems alternate role. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to quite get that arm twisted enough so that we could um, 
make that happen tonight. So I'm gonna shift it out to September. Uh, so you'll see that on next month's agenda. And if anybody is interested in that role, uh, please let me know, chair at 34dems.org. Um, in um, August 17th, a week from yesterday, um, we will be hosting an educational program about redistricting. Um, it's a freestanding event. Uh, you don't have to register. You can just click the link in our, um, in our calendar and get right in. Um, Allison McCaffrey from the League of Women Voters will present this program. It's really, really informative. I've seen it through another um, LD and it's really, really great to kind of understand that process and how you can kind of raise your voice in advocacy to make sure that um, this goes well for us. So um, I know it's really busy this summer, but do take a few moments, sit there, eat your dinner, but get informed on redistricting. Another reminder about our reunion picnic. Um, it is Saturday, September 18th. Um, go out, do a canvassing shift that morning, uh, knock on some doors, come home, take a nap, and then head over to Lincoln Park for a fun evening of, uh, you know, conversation with friends and family. Um, this will be a potluck um, and we're gonna provide barbecue and drinks. And um, we'll ask everyone who's coming to, to bring a side dish to share. Otherwise um, there's no admission. It's not a fundraiser. We're just gonna have a good time because everybody wants to uh, see everyone in person. And we're uh, obviously going to be looking at, you know, what the health department's saying and advising. And if we need to change that, we certainly will. Um, but again, it will be outside at Lincoln Park, uh, September 18th. Um, let's see, our board meeting has been rescheduled to the 25th. Um, if, as always, it's open to members. So if you uh, want to uh, uh, come to our exciting board, uh, board meeting, please let me know and I'll get you a link. Our next membership meeting will be on the 8th. Uh, Rachel is working on a pre-meeting program about whole Washington. Uh, one of our members is very, very involved with that and is gonna give us um, all the details on that so that later in the agenda, kind of like we did tonight, um, we'll take up a resolution in support of that in the meeting. So um, again, it will be a six o'clock, come, come early, listen to the presentation, and then vote later on in the meeting. Um, lastly, um, I do want to uh, just take a moment and it's kind of personal privilege a little bit. Um, White Center um, experienced a, a terrible fire uh, back in uh, July, on July 5th, the wee hours of July 5th, damaged, uh, heavily damaged eight businesses. And um, there's, um, you know, this great benefit coming up on the 29th that I wanted to shout out about uh, from 12 to 5, lots of things going on. Um, you know, please come out and support these businesses. And then Sarah, if you can put that GoFundMe in the um, chat as well. Uh, they are doing a, a GoFundMe to support those businesses. These are these are these are the types of small businesses that all of us Democrats are dying to help, and they really need our help. So please um, uh, drop drop them um, you know drop them a little donation if you can. Um, now on to uh, my most serious matter, uh, which is trouble in Burien. Um, you know, it's brewing. Uh, 2017, we had the same situation um, and we're really getting back into that same spot. The primary results, um, they're still being counted, obviously. I've put the most recent numbers here uh, so you could see it. Uh, this is based on the Monday night drop. Um, you know, it's, it's close, um, but it's really, really clear that we have a lot of work to do. Um, it's really time, and I'm pleading with you all, it's really time for all of us to band together to help the misinformation that's going on, the lies that are, that are being spread, and, and really this could impact the election and flip Burian back to the dark side. So we can't, we, we just can't st stand by and, and make that happen. Um, the Burian voice is back in full fire mode um, and spewing their, you know, um, 
their their uh, their nasty rumors. Um, we saw this back in 2017 when we helped elect the Fantastic Four. Um, we're going to need all hands on deck. Um, I'm asking everyone to do what they can. Um, I, uh, hopefully, Sarah's got the the link in the chat. Um, if you can, please just you know carve out a little bit of time, make a donation, knock on doors, make calls, text, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Um, we only have half of our precincts covered in Burien. So there's a lot of ground to cover, but these four candidates are ready to make it happen. I had a meeting with them the other night. They just need your help. Um, so please, please uh, click that link, sign up, um, and we'll get you in touch with the campaigns directly. Um, and then we're gonna be working um, with um, a lot of our union partners to put together Canvas events every weekend, starting in mid-September. Uh, so more info on that will, will come out as we nail things down. But um, please, in the, in the meantime, click the link, um, get hooked in. Um, we're, we're not gonna you know, bug you to do things that you don't want to do or that you don't have time for, but do something, um, please. Um, all right, moving on to our budget. Um, back in uh, April, uh, we were really tentative about proposing and committing to a budget um, at that point, just because of COVID. And, um, you know, we really just didn't know what, uh, what, you know, how things were going to end up. And, uh, you know, we, we were Zooming rather than in person. We didn't know when we were going to go back. So we really just kind of brought a budget in that was pretty conservative. And of course, it was based on, you know, what we knew at that time. Um, of course, uh, we had no idea we would get a, uh, a, a, a wonderful influx of membership. Um, and lots of extra dues that we didn't plan on due to the uh, King County race, King County executive race. And, and now uh, we're ready to propose some updates. And we, we told you we'd do this, uh, and now we're here to do it tonight. Our treasurer, Julie Whitaker, is going to take you through the proposed budget. Um, I did send this all out. Uh, I sent the original the proposed, and then of course the monthly report as well in that Sunday email. So Julie, I'm going to uh, turn it over to you to kind of walk us through the specific updates um, that we want to make. Carla? Yes. Before we get into that, results for the city attorney okay. race. That'd be um, great. So uh, for, with the adjusted tallies, including the delayed vote, from Marcy, I have uh, Nicole Thomas Kennedy with 40 and no endorsement with 17, meaning that Thomas Kennedy has been endorsed with 70.2% of the vote. Okay, thank you. All right, that is our last result, unless I um, miss something. Uh, thanks everyone for, uh, for coming back to the table for some more endorse endorsements. Okay. Back to Julie. Um, again, um, Julie's going to take you through this. These are the specific updates, the changes. So it's what we're adding and what we're taking away. So we'll go through all of this. If anybody has any questions, we can do that at the end. Okay, so we have added 12,000 to membership, which we already got with the big endorsement meetings. Um, to fundraising, we added 5,000. For the picnic income, we added 500. We removed 2,500 from miscellaneous small fundraisers due to COVID and the lack of that happening. In our expenses, we added 5,000 in printing for additional walk pieces for the general elections. Uh, we added 7,000 to additional campaign contributions. Thanks how we have this great income, we need to put it to work to do what we're here to do. Um, we added 5,000 to the caucuses and 5,000 to fundraiser expenses. We have the uh, 1,250 for the reunion picnic, which we're all looking forward to. 
Um, the expenses, again, 2,400 is for a four month rental for monthly meeting venue fees at $600 a month. And um, we had discussed whether we continue with the uh, Fontlaray or not, it is expensive and given the COVID, how many people are gonna come. So as Gina had said, we are looking into other venues that might be less expensive and more out in each um, area. So it's not all just in one place and it goes into each community. We have a thousand dollars for the holiday party and $400 for PCO activities and GOTV activities based on factual expenses. We reduce the speaker fees by 1500 since we're you know, not meeting together and don't have as much of that going on, even though we do get to do it on Zoom. We added uh, $3,000 to the credit card and bank fees due to the fact that that's what we've spent based on the large meetings for the endorsements and we'll probably have more large meetings. We reduced the legal fees by 4,000 because we don't have a lawsuit and the actual costs of 2020 should be that amount less. We have added 300 for annual awards based on actual annual awards. And we added 200 for the Zoom because of the large meeting license and we had to pay that extra amount. So basically um, we made more money. We're in better shape at the end of the month with carry or end of the year, I'm sorry, with carryover than we were when we started and we're doing really well and we can take all this money and apply it into areas that we actually accomplish something and get people elected and get things done the way we would like to get them done. So I hope you all approve. Okay, thank you, Julie. Is there any discussion on the updates to the budget? Thank you. Uh, Chris? Chris Porter? Madam Chair? Is that Chris or yes, I think that's Chris. Yes. Um, someone in the chat put uh, that the bank fees seemed a little high and wanted an explanation. So uh, these, these fees are, are pass along fees when you take in income, when you take in uh, uh, um, income through credit cards, um, they are uh, they charge the three or whatever percent it is. Um, I'd have to look back and see what our arrangements are, but we did not plan uh, for nearly enough of that in our, in our budget. So this is in addition to what is already in the budget now. Um, I, I, uh, well, I, Carl, I, in that one month, it was over $800 in credit card fees in one month. Well, that's a small month, actually. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> um, and then yeah. there are the other ones because it's credit card fees and the bank fees and they all add up. The better we do, the more they charge us because they charge us every time somebody makes a membership donation. And I think uh, the original budget had an added at $100 a month and it's far exceeded. Um, it's especially, sorry, I need to get someone on mute because there's all sorts of traffic going on. Okay, um, there have, I mean, we, we monitor this every month. Um, we've worked with the same bank for, I'm not sure how long, but we've uh, definitely at least three years um, and have not uh, shopped around for other rates. Um, I don't think that um, the, oh, actually now that I'm thinking about it, the rate doesn't come from our bank but it comes from our service, uh, which is N NGP, which is, uh, you know, a, um, a, you know, um, a democratic party uh, tool that we license. And they, uh, that's where the processing comes from. The, uh, the actual, the forms that people use to submit membership fees, as an example, go through this NGP tool. And the rates are based on that, not our bank 
itself. So it's not like we can shop it. We can't, uh, we can't find a way to shop around it. And Carla, uh, yes. Rachel, just to confirm, the, the fees get charged per contribution. So it doesn't matter necessarily how big the contributions are. It oh, no, it does. It's a percentage. But it also, doesn't it also matter if there are large quantities of contributions that there are fees being charged many more? Yes, because they're being charged for every contribution. Right, no matter the size. Correct. Okay. But again, it's a, it's a percentage. So it's all about how much we take in. Um, and that is, a, it's a flat rate. I wanna say it's like 3.2%, if I'm correct, uh, I, might be, I might be off off by a portion of a percent. But that, you know, we're, we're really just passing that along. We're, I mean, that's, um, there's literally no debate to it. Um, it's not a choice, unfortunately. Okay, so here's a good example. The original, the, the original budget had $1,500 allocated for credit card bank fees. We've already spent over a thousand. And we're only four yep. months into the year. One thing to remember um, what, why this might look different than years past is that um, every money, every bit of money that we take in right now is coming in through a credit card. In the old days, <laughs> when we would do a membership drive and it would be at a meeting, people would write checks. Um, so it's going to increase over time because the use of checks is going down further and further every year. Um, and that, you know, there is no charge on, on the amount uh, for a check. So just kind of part of doing business. Um, Art, do you have a question? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, the $400 for PCO and get out the vote activities can you explain what that is and uh, can, we, can we increase it? <laughs> well, it it's, on it's on top of what was already in there. Right. Yeah, okay, I see, all right. Yes, it's an, uh, it's an increase to what it's was already in the It's an increase, yes. Uh, and we increased it to add uh, GOTV uh, send off events like we did um, uh, back in uh, July. Oh, yeah, Berian. And, and that really all comes from, uh, you, you should talk to your friend Nick, because if Nick wants to plan other activities where he needs money, he can ask for budget. <laughs> you hear that, Nick? <laughs> okay, thank uh, you. Chris, uh, sure. Yay, yay, yay. yay. <laughs> Chris, anything else for you? You still have your hand up? Sorry, no, I to put it down, sorry. Okay. No problem. All right, um, Julie, would you like to make a motion to uh, adopt these updates to our budget? Yes, um, I would like to make a motion that we adopt these updates to our budget. All right, thank you. Julie has made a motion to adopt the updates presented for our 2021-22 budget. Is there a second? Point of information? Sure. Can now uh, we see the first page of that, please, on the screen? Oh, oh, uh, of the slide. Yes. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. I'm seconding the motion would take precedence over the interruption, so I wanted to second that motion. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Julie motioned and Chris seconded. All right, any, uh, any other discussion on the budget changes? All right, well, let's do it. Uh, please unmute and all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, anyone opposed, please say next. Fantastic. Now we get to do something fun. All right. Um, thank you, Julie, by the way. Um, You're welcome. 
All right. Um, the executive board spent time. Uh, let me get some mutes going here. And there we go. The executive board spent time debating this quite heavily at our last meeting. Um, we really came full circle with this recommendation um, based on what we just did with the budget changes. Um, take a moment to read through the slide. Um, you know, again, uh, we believe that our dollars should go where they will make the most impact. And this proposal, I believe, um, I think we all believe on the board, um, reflects that. Um, just a note, I have these in blue um, because we weren't sure what we were doing <laughs> tonight. Uh, I had just earmarked those, or I just marked those as potential uh, holds. Um, just understanding that we may not uh, use that money, of course, based on our um, our votes this evening, we do have the six hundred dollars um, that is not. Oops, turn it. Sorry about that. Um, we have the six hundred dollars for Seattle City Council nine um, that will then, um, I, I believe, float back into the reserve. Um, we can then. Uh, you know, see what happens with our additional endorsements um, uh, as we kind of go through uh, into September, and we'll come back and figure out how we want or propose how we will want to spend the remaining um, eight hundred dollars. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Well, oh, hi, Marcy Stone Beckett. Um, I, I don't believe that we are legally able to. Uh, put money towards the King County Superior Court races. Oh, okay. Uh, hmm. And why do you think that? Because those are nonpartisan races and they have very strict uh, rules about what they can do around partisan organizations. Okay. Uh, I've never ever seen this since 2007, I've never seen us make any endorse any contributions to uh, judges. Okay. Marcy, thanks for that note. You're welcome. Um, definitely didn't hit our radar. So I would say, uh, Chris Porter. Oh, I was going to say, Marcy is a, a thousand percent correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, then that actually makes, let's see, six, eight. So that gets us to 950 for reserve. Again, it doesn't mean we don't spend it. It just means we'll take it back, see what we do as far as other endorsements over the next month, and then we can distribute that uh, the rest of the budget at a later time. I'm sorry, Carla, can you repeat the last as to how you got to the where the 950 goes? So we've got 600 plus 150 plus 200. Oh, so you can't do the court either. Okay. Yes. Okay, so both of those. Yeah. Okay, got it, thank you. Okay. So we will hold off on those and then we'll come back with a recommendation for how to spend that at a later point. Um, Chris. Adam, Chair, do we still have other pressing pending endorsements that we need to consider that would um, require us to, or were, would prompt us to give money to, because if that is not the case, I'm thinking we can still do a little more something for uh, three, excuse me, four very close to the best races, which um, I think would even better solidify how serious the 34th is in supporting our, our candidates and neighbors in Burien. Uh, when we have in the past not been as strong as we could have been. All right, sounds like you wanna make a motion. I will say one thing. Um, I would like to, um, since we do have this additional funds here, these additional funds, I would like to consider um, reserving something because you know we have a, we have a school board race um, that will definitely be, um, we'll, we'll look at endorsements on that next month. Um, and I would like to consider at least a small donation for um, the Highline 
uh, school board candidate that we added to this evening. But that's just me. So I'd like to ask if any, if someone's wanting to make a motion, we can uh, certainly hear a uh, proposal to, to spend this additional money. Um, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I move that we add a additional $150 to each of the candidate slots in the Burien uh, races for a total of 600. That would still leave us some money to consider uh, for the um, school board races. Um, I oh, yes, I'm sorry, that's, that's the motion. Second. All right, that's, there's a second. From Ann. So Chris is, is motioning to take $600 of the 950 we will have and distribute that evenly across the Burien candidates, which would increase their um, contribution to 1350 per candidate. And we have a second in Ann Martin. Right. Um, is there any, uh, well, Chris, you spoke to your motion a little bit. Um, do you have anything else to say uh, in regards I, to your motion? I do, and I'll be very brief. <clears throat> the 34th has come a long way in going from a very distant support of candidates in Burien into a more of a hands-on, you truly are part of the 34th. It would be miserable to get this far, to have the relationship get to this extent and have us not pull out all the stops we can to make sure that if whatever happens, it's not because we didn't give all that we could in the support of these candidates and how much we believe it's so important to the 34th that we keep the candidates that we have. I think we owe it and we have to do this. Okay, thank you, Chris. Anyone against this motion? Anyone want to speak against the motion? Again, it is uh, an additional 150 to Burien candidates, adding up to 600, leaving $350 in reserve for other candidates. All right, let's vote on this motion. All, can, we, can we all be happy with a voice vote? I'd like to try that. All those in favor of Chris's motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed, please say nay. All right, that motion passes. Are there any other motions on the remaining $350, which is our reserve? Um, let's, Anne, do you have, uh, was that, okay. Uh, Norman? Yes, I motion to um, give 150 to the Highline School Board race that we just endorsed. Thank you, Sarah. Is there a second? Second, Chris. Thank you. All right, any, um, um, any words to say about that, um, Mr. Sigler? Uh, she sounds like a fantastic candidate, and we might as well uh, put this on the agenda so we can just make sure our future meetings are very efficient. Okay. All right. So Norman's motion is to is to uh, provide a hundred and fifty dollar donation to Jennifer Fishamba of Highline which would then leave a $200 reserve, which was our original reserve in the first place. All right, anyone opposed to this uh, amendment? I mean, uh, this motion, excuse me. All right, thank you, Norman. Uh, Julie, uh, is this, uh, yeah. about, is this um, about the motion? Yes. I'm sorry, I was writing. So we're taking, the, the motion is to um, take the 150 and um, for the school board position. Is that correct? That's right. For Highline? Okay. So then that just leaves the 200 for the future. And we had the Seattle school board person. Yes. 
Excuse and that me. will be heard at the September meeting. Okay, so then is there anything else after that? And then we well, won't have any money? Sure, there, there, are, there are actually lots of races. Um, there's lots of down ballot races, um, but we have covered all of the major races. Okay. Ex excuse me, who, who seconded uh, Norman's uh, motion? Chris Porter. Chris Porter, okay. Thank you, Steve. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and vote. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Hand up for a question. Um, Elena, do you have a question? Yeah, I was just curious, is this, uh, does this include general election? Like, are these funds for the primaries or for the general election? Because we have court races coming up, right? Yes, the port is covered here. The, the primary is over. Okay, so that, well, yeah, so the, are we, do we have any port candidates that we're going to consider? Or we've already, oh, we've already got it. Okay, okay, yeah, thank you. Okay. I'm just trying to catch up with y'all. That's all right, <laughs> we move fast. We move fast at this time of the night. <laughs> yeah, 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 all right. All right, all right. sounds good. Okay, um, we were in the middle of a vote, I believe. Was there anyone in opposition of this motion? Okay. All right, motion passes. Jennifer Fashamba will receive 150 and we will have 200 in reserve. Are there any last motions on the 200? Okay, fantastic. Thanks everyone, this will be fun. All right, so it is, I know it's late. I want to call out. Can everybody go on mute, please? Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, I want to call out to Bunny. Um, Bunny, are you okay on time? I know that this is late for you. Um, yeah, I've, I've got things under control right now. Okay, let's give this a shot. Let's try to finish. Okay. All right, we've got two we have two resolutions this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, one of which um, is uh, was brought to us by Ann Martin, who received it from our friends in the thirty second. Mm -hmm. um, the link is um, hopefully in the chat for you, and I also sent this out um, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Buddy, would you like to speak to this resolution? Oh, sure. I'll just give a quick recap that um, it talks about the 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 importance of unionization and the right to organize, that that's been uh, a major factor in building um, our economy and decreasing economic inequities. But there hasn't been in over 85 years any more significant federal labor legislation and what there was on the books, the National Labor Relations Act has systematically been chipped away at over time by Congress and the courts. Protecting the right to organize is an important concept and it's also an act which passed the US House of Representatives and has almost half of all the senators um, co-sponsoring it in the, in the US Senate. And it would do things like um, override uh, states right to work laws, um, uh, Im implement a card check, ban captive audience meetings, um, also let independent contractors, I like Uber and whatnot, organize collectively and impose penalties on companies that violate workers' rights. The resolution asks or directs us that we thank our, our US senators for co-sponsoring it and encourage them to rally support from the 60 or more Democrats that will be needed to pass this. Um, and that we ourselves will vocally and publicly support this and send copies of this resolution to our state Democratic Central Committee and various labor organizations. And I'd like to ask Anne to speak to the resolution. So you've made a motion, correct, Bunny? Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, I would. I would <laughs> like to make a. Oh, and the committee and the executive board both recommended do pass 
for this. So I would like to make a motion that we um, adopt this resolution. And I would like to hand off to Anne to speak in favor of it. And, okay. and so I will okay. second. Okay, will thank second you. All right, so, so Bunny has uh, motioned and Anne has seconded, Anne Martin. Uh, Anne, would you like to uh, take over and speak to the well, I I think that, um, that Bunny has done a, a great summary uh, I think that as we talk about justice and equity, it's important to recognize the role of unions uh, in providing us uh, with a balance to the, um, the big business and the corporations that have uh, basically taken over our system. So I urge people to vote uh, in favor of this resolution and that we let the world know that we support unions and unionization. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone, <clears throat> uh, anyone wanting to speak against um, adopting this resolution? Very good. Um, thank you, Anne. Thank you, Bunny. Um, let's, um, uh, there's no amendments um, or changes or questions. Let's go ahead and call the question. Okay. Uh, sorry? I said, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to get you, I'm trying to get you out of here, Bunny. All right. No, everything um, is under control right now. Okay, good. All those in favor of adopting the um, resolution in support of protecting the right to organize, please say aye. 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 All right. Anyone Aye. opposed? Uh, anyone opposed? Please say nay. All right. I don't think that we'd be Democrats if we would be opposing this. <laughs> so we don't oppose labor. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Resolution is adopted. Thank you so much. All right, last thing. Um, Annie and Bunny is, are up for the second resolution. This was brought to you to us by the Environment, Energy, and Land Use Caucus um, by our co-lead, Annie Phillips. Um, the resolution on sustainable mobility was sent to you on uh, Sunday. And I, uh, I hope the link's in the chat. This resolution was um, uh, was again uh, brought by the uh, was passed by the committee and the, or sorry passed by the caucus and then now Andy is Andy is bringing it in uh, for us to listen to Bunny do you want to give a, a summary about that and quick sure summary sure um, if, 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 Bunny before you start um, the we still have pro the pro act up Oops. on the screen right that's what I was going to ask there thank you. Um, right. And before I start, there was, is this where I bring this up? That there was a, yeah. an so amendment I, that, that yeah, the author. I might need, uh, well, so here, uh, the maker of this resolution sent us a change to it today. Mm -hmm. um, I am, uh, I'm going to let Bunny talk about this resolution as it stands. Mm -hmm. And then if, uh, if, if Gina, if you are still with us, if you could tell us, um, it is, I don't think it's a friendly amendment. It doesn't feel like it to me. It's, it is, is uh, there's actual content to it. So let's take that as an amendment after you go through um, and make your motion. Um, okay. Um, it, this points out that, that we are obviously, as we face yet another heat wave in a climate crisis. And at the same time, that, and much of that is caused by our use of fossil fuels, that um, we also have deferred maintenance, not just on our roads, but on the infrastructure that would help keep cars off the roads, that we have an unequal transportation infrastructure, um, that which has a disproportionately negative impact on communities of color and, and people with lower incomes, that this is exacerbated by our state of constitutional amendment, limiting the gas tax revenues to um, highways, what 
and that now there are new funding sources of carbon prices that haven't been committed. So this um, resolution asks that we invest in carbon neutral or low carbon um, means of transportation that the, the funds from the, these new sources not go toward increasing roads, but instead go to um, non-vehicular mobility and other forms of mobility that cannot be funded by the gas tax. So it's resolved that we that to call for an end just to the expansion of roads at the expense of all these other. Pardon? What? You're good. Oh, okay. Um, and that before building any new, that we have to adequately uh, maintain and repair our existing highways, roads, ferry systems, and that it resolves that the carbon, 100% of the carbon pricing revenue, um, use fees and expanded car tab weight fees be used to support non-vehicular mobility, uh, transit, passenger and freight rail, bike lanes, and walkable safe streets. Okay, but the, the, the addition, there was an addition that I, I happened to mention in there that pointed out that these are things that at this point are not funded by the gas tax. So, so I guess- that that is the amendment. So are you also making the amendment? Unless Annie wants to, to Annie, do you want to oh. talk about your amendment or? We, we, all right, so we, so we first have to get a motion on the floor oh. about the resolution. Okay, so I would, I would, this was unamended, passed, uh, adopted by the e-board with a recommendation to to adopt, but now we have a you don't an have amendment. To, yeah, you don't have to speak to that. Just make the motion. So I would make the motion is. that we pass this resolution. Yeah. And then, and and then, um, would you like to speak to your motion, or would you like Annie to? And then oh, Annie. after that, then Annie can make the amendment that she'd like to make. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, Bunny did a really good job explaining the resolution. Um, as I see it, this resolution is designed to protect the new revenue that will be generated mm -hmm. the Climate Commitment Act, the, uh, the carbon, uh, carbon fee and trade, cap and trade, that was an mm -hmm. act that was passed in this last legislature, which was a huge victory, and it will be generating revenue, but we don't want that revenue to go to repairing roads because repairing roads uh, already has a revenue source in uh, the gas tax. <laughs> so we want to keep them separate, and that's the reason for this resolution. And to, to further clarify that, uh, I just want to add a few words in um, the, the middle, therefore, the one that says, therefore be resolved that the 34th District Democrats call for a true investment in environmentally sustainable mobility. Right and here, down, I've, got, I've got it up on screen. Thank you. And highlighted for you. Great, thank you. <laughs> I was reading from my printout here. Um, and so I just want to add these highlighted words here, the bolded words that they wouldn't be bolded in, in reality, of course, to, to show that uh, there is a separation here and that um, the, the, the green things are not funded by the gas tax and the gas tax does fund the road repairs and any new roads, but we don't want new roads necessarily. I mean, they may be necessary, but we don't want to rely on roads because uh, when you build new roads, more car, more vehicles come and it just gets worse and worse. So um, I move that we add these few words here to try to clarify that. Second. 
That's Anne. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. As opposed to Annie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the amendment has been seconded. So amendment uh, by Annie, seconded by Anne. Um, any discussion on the amended language? Annie, do you want to say anything additional to the um, anything additional about the amended language? Well, um, I don't think so. I saw a question in the chat. Hannah says, so does voting for this mean we as the 34th are going on record as being against any new roads? No. Uh, oh, and answer that. I don't think that's what the intent is. Rather that funds be committed to other than roads, which the gas tax is funding. Right, exactly. The gas tax is funding the roads but it can't get its hands on this new revenue that's supposed to be used for green projects, green transport, including green transportation projects that would not be roads. Great question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think is it, is it, it's my understanding that these, that these new funding sources were specifically passed to fund green projects exactly. that, that was the promise when people agreed to these new fund to the new funding to the new taxes that they would be used for green purposes exactly okay elena did you have a question i'd like to speak in opposition oh okay um all right, well, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Anyone in opposition, you're up, go ahead. I love the spirit of this amendment and would totally agree if this policy was indeed generating revenue in the way that we wanted it to be generated. Um, the reality is that cap and trade I'm, I'm assuming this is cap and trade, right? Right. The policy, yes. Cap and trade is, is a policy that has been advanced by big polluters to create, a, it's basically like a wolf keeps holding to pretend that we're addressing the climate crisis, we're really not. It's putting the polluters in the driver's seat of how we respond to the climate crisis that they created. And um, like, for example, British Petroleum was a champion of this policy. And it is not a policy that is protecting us in terms of protecting our most vulnerable communities from the impacts of pollution and emissions that these big polluters are creating. And so I so appreciate the spirit of this that I would urge fellow LD34 members to hold off and wait until there is a, an analysis of what this policy really means. Because for example, our neighbors in South Core, or excuse me, in South Park in Burien and the Duwamish Valley in Georgetown have a lifespan that is 18 years less than residents in North Seattle. And that is directly attributed to, um, to pollution. And this policy actually gives polluters a pass that they do not have to decrease emissions in our district. It allows polluters to continue polluting in our district and to continue killing our neighbors um by their pollution and so i would i would urge our our my fellow ld34 members to just hold off because i actually would like the funds 
to be targeted to the neighborhoods that are most vulnerable to emissions that are really not being protected by this policy and finding ways that we can mitigate the, the incredible damage that this policy is doing and giving polluters a pass in our district. And I apologize for not being more specific. Um, it's a very complicated policy and there is going to be some clarity offered soon, but it is, um, I think it's urgent that we um, address the harm that this policy is doing and, and target funding to communities of color that are going to be um, sacrificed to the wishes of big polluters. Okay. Uh, can I ask a quick question, Elena? Um, uh, through this, you do, you're not implying, are you, that if we vote no on this, that that stops uh, the cap and trade? Those big polluters, there's, the, the policies have already passed and they're getting that passed. They're paying that, that money to be allowed to pollute. So this was to direct funding to things that pollute less. And you're saying you want that money specifically directed to projects in communities of color. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, what I'm saying is that the, oh gosh, I haven't had time to look at this in detail and I apologize if this was offered before the meeting and I didn't review it, but, um, this is directing the funding to specific- uh, Non-polluting things, yeah. Yes, and what I would suggest is that we may want to direct this funding to the incredible harm that this policy is creating in terms of the asthma rates for children who are in our district who will continue to suffer from asthma, mm -hmm. to households that need to um, fortify themselves against the pollutants that they are exposed to. And so I just, I, I, I think that specifying where the funding should go is premature until we really understand what kind of damage this policy has. Okay, I have a question then for Annie. It's my understanding that the money must be used, the money from this must be used for transit in some way, it must be used for some kind of mobility, whether it's uh, mass transit, bus lanes. Um, am I wrong there? Is that, am I? Yes, that's correct. Is, is that correct? Still here? <laughs> <laughs> So, May I call so, a point of order to address the motion on the table that we um, endorse this? My understanding is it has also has already received a second motion, and then we heard someone in a, in opposition. I just it seems like we're maybe getting a little bit away from the yeah. time limits okay. that we usually enforce. We, uh, we very much are. We very much are, and we need to. We either need to vote to table this and come back to it later um, or, or something. We, we can't we can't do all this question and answer. So we've had don't we, four we already had against um, and the against was more on the main motion. So we're, I'm sorry, I'm not doing my job here. Um, we've had speeches. So let's take the amendment to the language. Uh, obviously, they spoke to the, the reason why they want to make this amendment. Um, and then we had Elena came in and spoke more to the main motion. Um, is there anyone, is there anyone that want, we have to vote on the amendment to the language. Is there anyone that wants to speak against the amendment to the language, language specifically? If not, we will vote on the amendment and then we'll go back to the main motion to approve, uh, to sorry, to uh, adopt this, uh, adopt the amended or not amended um, resolution. Okay, no opposition. Let's vote on the amendment. The amendment is from Annie to to her um, to the original 
submitted resolution to add the words that are highlighted in yellow on the screen. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, please say nay. 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 Okay. I think the ayes have it. Motion passes. Language is amended. Now we'll go back to the original motion. On this amended language version of the resolution, we've had a speech for and a speech against. Does anyone else want to speak for <clears throat> this resolution? Excuse me, uh, Carla. Um, so, who uh, who made who motion to uh, pass the the made the original uh, motion? I did, Annie Phillips. So the original motion, and oh my gosh, I think I might have just muted Steve. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the original motion was from Annie, and I, I don't think you were asking about the second, so we, we've got that covered. Yeah, so she, she's, she's, she's motioning for both, both the, the resolution yes. and, and the uh, amendment. Correct. Okay. okay. Yep. Steve's taking, uh, taking minutes tonight, so <laughs> for the questions. <laughs> I apologize in advance. No, good questions. All right, um, so we've passed the new language. Anyone else wanting to speak for this resolution? If not, we'll go to a vote and then we can move on. All right, I see, I see no hands. So all those in favor of the amended language in this resolution, um, motion, to uh, adopt the resolution, please say aye. 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 Okay. All those opposed, please say nay. 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 I think we uh, I think we have a majority. Um, resolution is adopted. Thanks, everyone. All right, um, I would normally say, does anybody have any good of the order? It is late. I would like to, uh, if no further business, I'd like to, uh, and there's no objection, obviously, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Is there any objection? All right, August meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.